Hey, how's it, Rip? Good, good. How you doing? What you doing, man? Uh, I'm making a little fish trap here. Uh, basically, just a plastic bottle, cut. Uh huh. Um, then you'll slide it in. The just... theory being that the fish can swim through here, but they can't swim back out. A little bit of bait. We're using shrimp in this case, and a rock to hold it to the bottom of the tidal pool, and just jam the cover in. No kidding. That's gonna do it. That should do it. It's a trick I've seen. I haven't tried it yet, but hopefully it will work. All right. Let's go do it. All right. Man. Okay. A little cold. You wanna fill it up with water. Help it sink, of course. You got the rock in there. I guess you put it right next to the ledge. And we're done. So Rip, how long have you had that trap in the water? It's been soaking about an hour now. Let's check it out. Bring it out. Man, it's unreal, Rip. Yeah, it seems to work well. It's going to be great for Monet guys when they want to use them as bait fish. Oh, yeah. Jumping jacks like this, good for all kinds of things. Get that rock out of there. I think that rock was a good idea. It makes it more comfortable to go in there. Yeah, and it helps hold the bottle down at the bottom. That's a nice size guy in there. Seems to work, nice little trick. Right on, Rip, let's get the bait to the girls. All right, let's do it. Well, if you didn't know this before, my fishing friends, now you do. All kinds of fish eat jumping jacks. Nice fish, Monet. So if you want to hedge the odds in your favor, use the bait jar trick we just learned about and put your live bait to good use. Awesome, you guys. Yeah. Okay, you ready to put them back? Why? Because we got to go back swimming. Back to the ocean, because we can't eat this guy. Why? He wants to go swim. Come on. What do you have in mind? Well, we're gonna try and catch something from the out in the deep today from shore. Caught ahis like this before, mahis like this before, caught an ono. All from shore. All from shore, yep. We gotta see this. Let's give it a try. Hey Chad. Yes. Where'd you learn how to fish like this? You know, just from coming down here from when I was a kid and fishing with a bunch of different people, learning a bunch of different things. So one of my favorite things to do. What's with the bag? Well, we're gonna put a little bag on here to get it out a little further and a little quicker than just waiting on the current to take the bottle out. Gonna use some heavy line on here to make sure we don't lose this out there. Hey, guys do this with kites too, huh? Yeah, guys use it with kites and they make little mini sailboats and a lot of different theories to it. So we just tied the bag off to the floater bottle here and that's gonna keep the floater on the surface and we're going to be keeping an eye on it throughout the day and that's going to be our main indication. If we don't see the floater, it's probably underwater and there's a fish on it. Okay, so now we're going to bait her up and send it out. I'm going to slack it down, I'll tell you when to toss it. Go for it. So Chad, when you get a bite, no bell? No bell. You know, a majority of the time we're gonna check our bait for pretty much every hour and uh, a lot of the times you don't even know you got a fish on until you're bringing it in. So much drag out there with this much line in the water that they don't really take much, you know, uh -huh. drag off the reel. And there's not much structure way out that they can swim around for quite a while and fight that yep, bottle, huh? Exactly. You don't really gotta worry about getting caught off by the reef or anything. Right on. Hey Chad, what? Somebody took the bait. Yep. Bait was gone. Got everything back, we're ready to put one on and send it right back out. Do this over and over again. As you can see, folks, if you want to be a good fisherman, not only do you need a good teacher like Chad, you also need to have patience and persistence. Oh yeah, and it's always good to have a plan B. Hey, so Chad, what's the drill? So this spot is real good, but not much room to work with, though. 
good way to do it safely is get one person with bait and one person whipping at a time. That way there's not stuff flying all over the place and can comfortably fish it. So we're just gonna take turns and trade off and have as much fun as we can. Yeah, usually when we come out here, we try and base it around the moon, you know, darker the better. So we lucked out tonight, the moon rises a little later on in the night. Me and Scotty have been fishing these rocks since we were young boys, man. Did a lot of adventures through these rocks, trying to find which point's good and what's not, and good fun. My sister-in-law, Chrissy's a tiger out here. She's down for any kind of fishing adventure there is. Got all the skills down, one after another. The setup we're running is a resin ball since we're in the shallow here. The basic lunkalite and a green fly. Now the drill is Chrissy's out here going with bait. I'm going with a fly. Trying two different strategies here. So I got a few Mimpachi commitments I got to come through on. So we're going to try and catch a little bit more than we can normally eat here tonight. Try and make a lot of people happy if we can. All right, buddy. Well, guys, time to start making good on Chad's commitments. Looks like Chad's fish-eating friends are going to be very happy, just as we are, because on this trip, almost every way of fishing we did resulted in fish being caught. The key word being almost, but we'll be back later to make good on catching a fish this way too. Folks, much more on The Fishing Show right after this.